First of all, thank you for being here, for not being afraid of the snow apocalypse. Uh, thank you, Michael, for shoveling the snow in front of the church and the sidewalks. I appreciate. About five months ago, I became a U.S. citizen, and before being sworn, I had to pass the t citizenship test. They gave me a booklet with 100 questions, and each question had a paragraph or two of an answer text and all the candidates for U.S. citizenship has, have to study the book and prepare themselves for an oral examination. At that examination, the federal agent asks you 10 questions, all from that book that they gave you ahead of time, and you have to answer at least six of them correctly to pass the test and become a citizen. The whole book is about the history of this country, about the laws governing our country, about the separation of powers. There was something about nobody being above the law. It was very legal and historical approach to what the USA is all about. If you know me, you know I love history and I can be quite legalistic, so I enjoy the study. And luckily I passed the test as well. But I'm thinking that it would be useful for not only foreigners who become citizens to study this book, but even for the US born citizens to be familiar with uh, the values and the laws governing our country. It's important to know the rules that we all are meant to live by. But this was about citizenship in this particular country. As Christians, we are also citizens of a different reality. St. Paul will say, we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of kingdom of God. And the different reality, the reality of God's presence, is governed not as much by laws and rules, but by values that all Christians profess. Laws and rules change with time. Even our U.S. Constitution had to be amended a number of times. In the beginning, women couldn't vote. Human beings could be owned by different human beings. And with time, as our democracy and republic grew more and more mature, we have evolved and updated our laws. The same can be said about the kingdom of God and our human understanding of it. The rules and the laws that the church proclaims change with time. We learn better how to be the body of Christ. We grow in our understanding. But one thing doesn't change. The very heart of the kingdom of God stays the same. The reason for which we all have been baptized stays the same. When Jesus received the baptism in the river Jordan, the voice said, You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. And from that moment on, the ministry of Jesus began. When we were baptized, perhaps a number of years ago, it just happened that today is my 44th baptism anniversary. When we were baptized, we also were sent for a mission just like Jesus. We were literally anointed with the holy oil 
to do what Jesus did. In the book of Isaiah, today's first reading, there is a very beautiful description of that mission of the Messiah and of each one of us. A mission that we as baptized people are called to fulfill. The prophet Isaiah says, here is my servant, meaning the Messiah, but also you and I. Here is my servant, upon whom I have placed my spirit. My servant will bring forth justice to the nations. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. The Messiah and each one of us has been called not to serve the laws and the rules of the church or the country, but to be the servant of justice. Our vocation as people of faith is to, is to spread justice wherever it is, it is not lived out to its fullness. Justice changes from generation to generation. Justice calls us to different fights, different battlefronts. But as Jesus served justice and proclaimed the good news to the poor, liberation to prisoners, so have we been sent by the virtue of our baptism to bring justice to others. As individuals and as community, this is our vocation, to be the servants of justice, to serve God in all our sisters and brothers who cry out for justice. In the history of the church, this fight for justice has taken different shapes and has been fought in very different battles. In the first three centuries, we had to fight for our survival. When the early church was persecuted, justice meant fighting for life. And then from the year 312 on, we were enabled to serve not only our survival, but also to serve the needs of others. So the Christians have been always at the forefront of the battle for justice. May it be for the slaves who are mistreated, may it be for the women, may it be for the LGBT community, or any other battlefront. It is the people of faith that stand up and fight for justice, that fight for justice and a better kingdom of God continues in our life as well. The fight is not over. There is still need for the people of God, for the servants of God, as Isaiah says, to serve God's justice. As you remember your baptism, as we remember Jesus' baptism today, remember that we are here sent by God to be the servants of justice. Amen.